Okay, so this tutorial I'm going to cover how to use um, reference objects, uh, reference files uh, in Cinema 4D called XREFs. Um, in class I was talking to some of the students um, uh, about the setup. Um, there's some caveats to how you have to network for this to work as effectively as it needs to. Um, and honestly, I think sometimes for these group projects, just moving the files back and forth and using instances and things like that can be just as effective as, as long as you know what it is you're doing. But uh, I wanted to show this um, for some of you. You might be like, eh, I'm not sure this would have worked. And some of you might want to kill me uh, because you uh, maybe wanted to use this <laughs> earlier than, uh, than now. But uh, so anyways, so let's dive in here. I have three files. Um, uh, I built the shelf. Um, I built a, it's a cube, but right, I'm going to call this a, a book. Um, I'll work on this in a second. And then I just have this room and I've saved all these files. Let's save that one as well. Um, and what I want to do is show how to use uh, X references. So um, this is a system for um, referencing other files and loading them into your scene. And then if someone else works on them and saves it, uh, you can import that uh, into the um, update that uh, that reference into your own file and so I'm going to do this kind of in a nested sense so I I've got the book and I'm going to put it in the shelf and then eventually I'm going to put the shelf in the room and of course uh, once it's in the room it'll be referencing not only the shelf but that file will be referencing the book so um, let's just show how to use this so within the shelf system I am going to go to create and I'm going to create an xref um, so it's an external reference, right? And again, I have not uh, used this uh, that much, and I can imagine there's going to be some uh, flaws, so um, tread lightly. But I'm going to add this reference. I'm going to leave it at all the, the defaults. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the book. All right, so the file, so you'll see I have the shelf. Um, and to create the shelf, I created the frame around it as an object. Uh, and then I just created an individual shelf that I'm uh, using a cloner, right, to make the multiples of. But you can see this new file has come in, uh, a new object here to a nested object. I have book, which is the X reference, and then the book. Um, so it, it basically says this is the referenced file. And then inside of it is this object called cube. Um, and it even puts a little X here on these objects. And so the whole idea here is that I would take this and uh, so in this instance, I'm going to take the book and put it into a cloner. And instead of a grid, I'm going to use linear and let's just make it, I don't know, four units. I'm just guessing here, uh, five units. Okay, something like this. And I'll make several copies. Okay, so um, obviously this is uh, the one thing about this is that it doesn't fit into the scene correctly. Um, and if I go into object and model mode, which is the default we've been using, and scale this, and when I re-import the object, it won't do it. Uh, it will basically get rid of that scaling that I've done on the object. Um, um, and I don't want to touch this here. This is this this referenced uh, object. I guess I mean, I guess I could try to scale, but we're going to run into problems. I think um, because I, I want to reference this, I don't want to touch it. So this is one thing is is you're match, mapping um, matching up scale. Normally this would be okay because I would just take this. I would go. Uh, I'm going to go into object mode and scale that object. But I think what I'm gonna do is have a problem when I put it back into the cloner. Yeah, it's not going to um, hold on to that. So you can move and scale this object like if you were just doing it on your own, right? And then I, um, I could duplicate this. I don't know why you would wanna do it with multiple um, instances in this fashion uh, because I wanna use a cloner. But the, my point here is, is you're matching scale. When you bring in an object as an X reference, you can move and scale it individually. But once it's going to go into a cloner, um, that's going to end up being a problem. I'm just going to leave it here. 
um, within the cloner and put it in. And I'm going to use the cloner transform offset um, to scale these down. So uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, makes that fit, I think. So let's take this up here. Here's my little books. All right, and um, I'm going to, uh, let's add some more. All right, so here's the books, and I'm not gonna go, obviously, would wanna do something a little better <laughs> than this um, with those books, but you, you get the, the point here. But I did wanna make, uh, um, just show that you can run into some scaling issues, especially if you're using cloners, but individually on its own, you could try to scale this object and, and place it. Um, and that won't have any, you won't have any issues with the, the reference. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, save this uh, scene itself. And now I'm gonna go to the, um, the room file. And here I'm going to create an X reference. And this time I'm going to choose the shelf. All right, so you can see this is now a reference and there's a reference inside of that one, right? So here I can just take the shelf and I'm going to move it uh, into place inside my room, right? And uh, there we go. So let's say, so the first thing is when we created the, let's go back. Oh, let me save this. So I'll save this in my room. I'm going to go back to the book file and the book, uh, you know, it's a cube, right? I, I would like to um, model this a little bit better. Excuse me. So uh, here's the cube. I'm going to go into uh, polygon mode and let's select these around the outside. And I'm going to hit I for inset. Right? And um, uh, one thing, the default, I think, for the inset is like 89 degrees. So you can see it breaks these into islands. Um, so if I just move this past 90, it will retain and keep these connected into a group, right? So I'm just, uh, get a little inset and then I'll hit uh, D for extrude and just put that in. And, you know, I could do extra modeling on this to, to give it more of a rounded uh, edge or something, but we'll just call that good. Um, and uh, let's also... Let's go create two material. Oh, I've already created these materials. I forgot to delete them as I was working up the example. So um, if I click on the cube and I've got those um, polygons selected, I'm just going to drag this white material onto the pages and then I'm going to go to select and invert it. So they get the other polygons and I'm going to put the cover on it. All right, and if it looks like I had done this before, let's make sure, oops. But you know what, let's do that all again. Okay, so select the polygons, form a cube. All right, so this is gonna be the cover and I'll create, oops. There we go, sorry, I had both of them accidentally selected. And here we will do the invert, inverted selection and this time I will just make sure I have this one and I'll put that in there. Okay, so um, again, just remember on these materials, if you create a tag for that, um, this one's called poly, Polygon Selection 1. Um, if I were to name this uh, cover, I would want this to say cover. Right, so that it applies to it. Um, like the example here, let's call this pages. Oops, sorry, not that one. Let's just delete that. Okay, so you can see right now, this has a name, it says Polygon Selection 2, and this uh, material, it doesn't have a, a name in here, right, as far as the selection. So this is covering the whole entire object. So I'm just going to name this pages. Oops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, little polygon selection. There we go. Oh, 
sorry, there, I want their pages. Sorry, I've typed it in the wrong field because I want this one to be pages. I'm doing this at like 10 o'clock at night with on no sleep, so bear with me. Okay, let's just cover that again. So again, I named this selection pages with those polygons and we tell this material, hey, only apply to the selected polygons called pages. All right, so here's my book. Um, you can see it's not been saved. I'm going to save the file and I'm going to go back to my shelf. <clears throat> and uh, you can see I still have this shelf unit in here that has the um, uh, just blocky books, right? It doesn't have anything. And I'm going to click on the reference, which is this little paper clip, right? And I'm just going to say reload. And you can see I now have those updated modeled books inside of here right with the corresponding textures and you can see that they're referenced in here all right so let's go to the shelf unit i'm going to save as i go along <clears throat> so the um this individual shelf that's in here uh let's say you know i just put that in as a placeholder i'm going to make it editable and i'm going to click on the let's turn off the corner for a second <clears throat> i'll click on these two edges and bevel it not bridge I want bevel and this I always forget that little hotkey all right so I've beveled that just a smidge that sounds better that looks fine to me I'll turn the cloner back on <clears throat> the other thing too is I want a material uh, a wood material to go on this so I'm going to quickly pop out the UVs on this object so let's just go to the UV edit um, and on the shelf I'm going to Go into polygon mode. I'm going to grab the rectangle, select all my polygons. So the UV is now acting um, on all the selections. And I'm going to just reset the UVs. I'm going to come down to the automatic UV packed and hit apply. That gives me some nice clean UVs. I'm going to go to the shelf. Um, same thing. I'm going to select all those polygons. And I'm going to reset the UVs. And I'm going to hit apply on this one. And it gives me a nice clean layout for both of those. Now let's go back to the standard. <clears throat> and um, for this shelf, you know, let's go to the asset browser and I'd already done a little search for wood. And I think I liked maybe this. I have no idea which wood. Oh, let's, let's go this one. Okay. And I'll put that on the entire shelf. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah, I put it on the right thing. There we go. <clears throat> and if I turn on the red shift. There we go. So you can see it's mapped on there. It looks nice, uh, good enough for what, for what I need. So let's hide the asset browser. And now let's go ahead and save the shelf file. And let's hop back over to the room. And then on the room, um, I have... Uh, multiple references here. So if I click on the shelf and I just upload it, it should update the books because those are updated in the shelf file. So I'll just say reload. And you can see I now have those textures um, on there. Uh, again, one thing to keep in mind is um, if I were to pull up my um, directory for this. So if I was to say open, you can see in here, here's my group project. I have these three files. I don't have the texture. I don't have a texture folder saved in here. And right now, because I'm using the textures from the asset browser and the preferences are set up to always look into that asset browser directory to, to find things like wood and that, it's finding the wood texture. But depending on where I move it on a machine, it might not be there. So just make sure that in your group project, you're also putting all the textures into that. Okay. So, um, so this works pretty well. I have no idea how it would work with anything like uh, animation. Um, um, but I mean, it is part of the reference in here. And I think since we're just rendering mainly uh, camera or animating cameras, then that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so anyways, the one downside of this is currently in the lab, we don't have a um, Dropbox-like directory with a public folder so that... Um, 
Right now, everything's being uploaded through a browser to, to OneDrive, I think is the way most of you are doing that. Um, I'm gonna work uh, with the, um, uh, our lab person, IT person, Terry, to see if we can get uh, the public folder set up um, in there so that you all can use it this way, maybe in conjunction with OneDrive. But um, anyways, that's uh, one thing that I, um, I need to work on. But hopefully this might be an avenue to help you. I wish I'd shown this to you a week ago and wanted to, but <laughs> uh, unfortunately with my little one being sick, um, we didn't get to look at that. Um, I'm gonna open up one more file actually, and I wanna make another thing clear. So let's say that you're not gonna use the XREF system, right? And uh, I'm just gonna create a cube and off to this, and then let's create a plane. So, so let's just say what you're doing is um, you're placing the objects. Uh, you've opened up another file, right? And someone modeled a cube. And this is like, we'll pretend that this is like a, a crazy chair that you're um, uh, going to use in the scene or, I don't know, some object. Right? And so uh, one of your teammates has only modeled this quickly but you need to place this in multiple spots across the room, right? Now you could use the cloner, um, but then the cloner is going to scatter it. You want some individual um, instances of this. So um, you, if you create a, if you click on an object and you create an instance uh, right here, right here, so there's an object that says cube instance, and I move this over and this is a copy of that cube. So another way you can do this, and we've already done this before, is use the place command. So here's my cube, and as a default, it's set up to be an instance of this object. So I'm just gonna use the control, and I'm just going to drag these around, right, to where I'll pretend like these chairs would need to be. And the nice thing about this is if I go back to the cube, uh, and let's go into this. And I'm going to do uh, solo. Well, in fact, let's not do solo. Let's leave that on. And I'm going to select this cube. I'm going to move it up so I can see it. And I'm going to make it editable, poly. Uh, and let's, oops. Let's inset and extrude and inset again and extrude down in. Okay, so here's this object, right? And these are all instances of that. And this has been, you know, uh, set up one way or the other. And let's pretend we have a, a different file where someone um, modeled this object. Yeah, so let's take, well, instead of that, let's make a, just a cylinder. Let's give it just six sides. And let's make it editable. Okay, and B. And let's select maybe every other face here. And just extrude it out. And enter and D. Enter and D. Okay, so actually, this is the way that they, you all as a team, have decided this object um, uh, needs to look, right, uh, in your scene. So. If I just copy this and I'll go back into my main scene, you're like, you know, Dan, I've already placed all these instances um, of, of what this needs to be. And I'll paste this in here. So here's my cylinder, right? And I, they're uh, similar in um, their positioning and their basic size, but I need it to be the different object. I don't want this to be cube. I want it to be cylinder. So if I... Um, Shift select all of those instances and I take cylinder and just put it down in here. It will update every one of those instances. So these instances now are saying, hey, cylinder is the thing that we're making. Right? Uh, and placing in the scene, right, wherever it needs to be. So even if you don't use the X reference, if you use instances, right, so 
Um, I'm thinking of, you know, uh, Team One has these little awnings that are getting placed all over. So if you have awning one, awning two, awning three, and someone has made that, and you bring in your scene and you place it, and you place it using the instances, if someone makes any updates, you can copy it back into the scene, and instead of having to replace it, you would just tell the instance to use the cylinder. Or if you're like, oh no, actually it was supposed to be the cube, um, we can put that back in there. Oh, sorry, make it visible, right? And so that's there. So placing with the instances um, is, uh, and I would group these, right? So that you know which instances are, are what. Um, but this is another quick way to place things and update components of your file, right? So you've gone to the trouble to place it, but if someone had to go back and UV map it and import a new version, you could just uh, replace the instances. Okay, so a fancy way of using the XRFs, if you want to go that route, that we need to work on a, um, a network system that would make it truly function so that when people save and you reload, it would update instead of having to download all the time. But even if you're doing the download system, you can use the instances to, um, for the placement of your objects so that you can update them rather quickly as you go forward. Um, with any texturing, UVing, or modeling updates uh, that you do. Okay, wow, 21 minutes, a little longer than I normally do. Hope this helps.